established leadership. So one of the things that we had talked about um, yesterday in our breakout group was the idea of having some kind of a uh, executive board or steering committee that um, that could be used to do things like establish or to, to take in proposals for workshop workshop topic ideas. And of course, this steering committee might be useful for doing other things too. But that could be the sort of forum of leadership. Yeah, that, that's essentially somebody that will come, come up with, uh, that will organize the whole group and, and do what you're doing now. So uh, say, okay, we need action items and check with everybody to see, you know, come up with timelines and, and check on those and then uh, assign responsibilities and uh, try to get people connected, uh, organize workshops, you know, all, all that organizational kind of stuff. Yeah. I like what Bob said yesterday, which is you need to know where we want to be and have a compelling vision to get there, because otherwise people are busy and they don't want to just be in some workshop. So if there was a specific NIH call we were going for, or if we thought we had a real traction we could get with a particular business, you know, we'd want to have a very compelling short vision of what makes it different and that we could then shop around. And they know we're going after this thing. Well, could that we'll be talk two, about funding later. Uh, could that be two different things where a vision statement is one thing and then identify the end goals for that? Yeah, so we could, yeah, so we could make up, so that would be one way to look at it is that can we come up with a vision statement, first of all. But the vision statement is likely to be fairly broad. And so in order to really capture um, people's time, and resources. You're right, you probably need something more specific to go after in the short term. So it's, there's a way of looking at it as sort of a long-term issue, like here's the vision statement, what's the whole purpose of having the consortium in place, but then let's look at short-term goals of, <coughs> of specific opportunities that we could go after, or, or addressing uh, incremental steps towards a larger, broader scale, a larger, broader vision. Well, if, if we don't look at any kind of multi-institutional initiative, there's no reason for us to exist. I mean, uh, because we can get access to information from so many varieties of ways, but the potential of the knowledge base across institutions, I, I would think, would be the, the unique element, and so are the research initiatives that we could be approaching as a multi-institutional uh, venture and, and the kind of thing we were talking about this morning of maybe it's a we've got three or four potential projects one might be studying aging in place within in within existing infrastructures one might be uh trying to affect new technology integration into new developments you know so maybe there's three or four potential multi-institutional research projects that could be identified but if we don't have some uh, ability to, to integrate the knowledge across the group, so I don't really think there's a reason for it to create a structure because we can get access to information just about uh, through so many variety of ways. Uh, you know, we probably would not be able to maintain interest, would be my suspicion. Let me suggest something. Uh, sound, you know, the whole discussion the last two days has been about providing uh, health care for an increasingly larger number of el elderly people. Um, and I would presume we would want to be able to do that to pr promote the, uh, the possibility of them living longer. And as you diagram out last night, not having no, a declining health, but but rather precipitous declining health. Um, and we want to do that at the lowest possible cost. You know, not to de deny anybody health care, but we need to do it in such a manner that, that we can maximize the number of people that we reach. So to me, that's sort of the overall goal that 
that uh, is stretched from here, and I would say you ought to just go ahead and reach out and grab Denver and put it into this I-70 car as well. But then you have uh, a, a, a St. Louis to Denver car to, that can be looked at, which has such a variety of population and, uh, that it, it would be a strong test of any set of ideas that you're going to put forth. Uh, and each entity along this corridor has different capabilities to be able to look at varying issues. Uh, for example, you know, we, we're probably going to proceed with this multi-generational uh, community. That may be unique. I don't know. Maybe somebody else is thinking about doing the same thing. But that could be tested against the traditional way of retirement communities and so forth. We can look at uh, data management issues. And some of us might have capability of that because that's a key piece of the question. Sensor development, that's another thing that has to be developed. Uh, so there are a whole bunch of, you know, a smorgasbord of, of different kinds of things that each entity in the, in the car can pick and work on. And the bridging mechanism would be, you know, if you want to form some kind of overall committee that, you know, as representation from, from each end, uh, I would suggest you try to do this uh, electronically rather than spend money on everybody going to a central point to meet like we did for this meeting. Uh, but I think we have a, a new facility in our building that was just built that, that's not being utilized, but it's a video conference facility. You know, we spent $150,000. I can't get anybody to use it anymore. Um, yeah, because you can use Skype. Pardon? You can use Skype. Yeah, I know you can use Skype, but this one's got, it's so sophisticated. It's got a camera that pans to where you, you know, whoever's talking. So I don't have to, you know, move the controls around and so forth. Um, but anyway, the bottom line of it is that I think that could be stated as sort of the overall goal. And then the vision comes after that. What's the vision uh, of this entity? I think you could make a case to some um, funding agency that um, we represent the broad spectrum of possibilities uh, for providing meaningful health care to uh, an aging population. And we offer a, a variety of ways to test out different approaches. I mean, that's going to be the strength that you, if you come together uh, in, in sort of this organization, each entity having the option of sort of proposing, but making sure that what they're proposing is complementary or at least in concert with other <coughs> members in the, in the organization. And, uh, you know, and I think you ought to go out to both private and public funds. You know, I was doing a little research last night. And I, I just was curious, well, who's the biggest life insurance company in the country? It's MetLife, you know? And a uh, very benevolent organization, and it may be that they might be interested in sponsoring something like this. Hell, they sponsor, you know, uh, blimps over. They can send field. a blimp all the way across <laughs> yeah. from St. Louis to Denver. They can start transporting your uh, money back. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Use a blimp instead of the. MetLife actually has a history of having aging in place. They do. Good. They have a dedicated branch. Well, I just looked at it. They made a boatload of money last year, and, uh, and the reason they made it is because they, their uh, CEO predicted that the uh, housing bubble was going to happen and sold all their uh, assets in that area. So he, they get burned like a lot of other organizations. Perhaps one thing that, <clears throat> that can be done fairly quickly and easily, if there there is a interest in a multi-institutional initiatives, we can put together a profile of the skill sets and knowledge and capabilities at each of the sites. So, you know, obviously we've got to contribute architectural knowledge, uh, nursing knowledge, IT knowledge, 
we have some uh, identification of the skill sets that are available across the potential consortium that might help in terms of identifying uh, matches to particular research interests. That's, so what? Uh, sorry, I was going to say that's kind of starting to build and fill out the map, but uh, in conjunction with that, Frank, which I think that's critical for stuff. I, would, I kind of think about this as from the mountains to the river and the Rockies to the Rockies <laughs> here. But if you think about trying to establish uh, a demographic snapshot of what the context is right now demographically, Tracy, I know you work with uh, demographics a lot, but if you think about aggregating um, you know, the current social and economic and all the kind of uh, data which exists within our corridor, that might be another good first step. Which establishes the uniqueness of it. Right. And, and there's a potential, the potential. And the potential for change. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've got. Uh, so one of the other things that was suggested yesterday, in addition to establishing a profile of skill sets, which could go on to the website, so that it would be in one place, so make it easy for people to see. This is the. The new, where's Dennis? The New Cities yeah, website, about right? The New Post Cities time. website um, is to also identify a list of clinical challenges, a list of you know, technology, uh, technology uh, capabilities, data sets, test beds. Right? Is that what you said, John? Um, that could go in that list as well. That would be part of the sort of profiles and skill sets. So it gives people a place to see all that stuff all the time. I could also interject partnerships, right? If there are practicing partnerships for students um, in the profit and there are you know, other areas that could be specifically leveraged across the network where you have relationships. So do you like the steering committee idea? Mm -hmm. Maybe have some representative group of people that could have the steering Andy, committee? Andy, this is Shan. <coughs> hey, I just got off the phone with Edward. Pretty and, uh, mm -hmm. neat. volunteering those in this room, but all those who would be interested in being in a steering committee, raise your hands. I, I would. I wouldn't want to head it, but I would. Yeah. <laughs> OK, she's going to capture names. Yeah, why not? Go for it. This, I mean, this puts me at a good time because I'm going uh, to be starting a research leave as of January 1st. And I'm not. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I actually have, that's why I'm volunteering her. So I actually have time to do it this year. Well, keep in mind you got blended with the other group. Okay, well, let's go, yeah, let's right. go around the room so you get, capture the names. Well, just yeah, your spelling. Name. <laughs> I, I, I can't read your spelling. H E E G U N G P I N. H E E G U N G P I N. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? else along the send? Mike. Greg Kakin. G R E G K I N G. I'll volunteer. Paracutes. That's why you saw it during March. They can put me down to if you want to have another technology person in there. Okay. And they can put me down to Yeah, I bet you. There's some people on this end here that have the song. Okay, Katie. Katie and Kathy. Katie and Kathy. Katie and Kathy. Katie and Kathy Boyer. It took me a long time to figure out. <laughs> and Kathy, you're the C, correct? I'm the C. <laughs> so I, I don't know. We might, we might want to look at, you know, how. Well, we probably don't want a very huge group because it'll make it more cumbersome. But, but we do want good representation. Good representation. I think that we want different sure. disciplines, different institutions, and I think it's a good idea to have people that span the commercial sector as well as the academics. I think Nelda might want to, but she's not in the room, so 
Hold on, Dominator, then. So I have this list of no to be involved, and then there might be more of an executive committee and an ad hoc nursing at KU. You know, to actually do it. So I can stop. So at least we know who out of this room wants to participate in this. You know, we can kind of go up and down from that, like create sure. that exec, and then have ad hoc. Well, I, I mean, I'm willing to participate, but I don't want to get overcommitted. And then there's also the other room, too, mm -hmm. so I'm sensitive right. a little bit to, you don't want 10 people out of this group and 10 people out of the other group. No, but you, want, you want a manageable number, yeah. but, but, but actually having a list of people that would be willing to be involved, yeah, because, because she's right, ultimately what you may end up with is sort of a hierarchical structure. Mm -hmm. So you, maybe you don't have everybody on the steering committee, but you form different committees that are focused mm -hmm. on different things. And so one of the other other right? What? Inviting more people, right? So there may be an opportunity to sure. also yeah. submit names of other right. um, members of, yeah. of the broader community. Right. And I think um, that one of the other ideas that I heard uh, yesterday was this idea of having um, proposals for other meetings and other workshops that we could get together and having some sort of steering committee. <coughs> decide whether those were worthy, if there was enough interest to call people together to do those kinds of meetings. Give, and to give us another specific, more purposeful reason to bring people together. So for instance, if we identify some particular funding activity, some particular potential project, we might want to organize a workshop around that project mm -hmm. idea, bring people together and figure out um, how to how to define a mechanism for going after that opportunity. Uh, I have another idea for an action item. Um, one of the things, strengths that we've been talking about is the different disciplines and data collection. Uh, thinking about data collection, when I go to do my secondary data analysis, uh, I'm interested in these sociological variables, but they're often not paired in the same data set as these variables that other disciplines might be more interested in. And I think that maybe, Thinking about developing a survey that spans things like the built environment, health, uh, social, physical, technology. Um, you know, we could be we could be working on, and that's something we can do through you know email coordinations and things like that. Looking at you know what kind of questions would I like to see on a survey that we could then go to one of these large funding agencies and look at this multidisciplinary survey and maybe it'll have separate modules so not everyone gets bombarded with a thousand questions but but I'm thinking you know in terms of I do a lot of quantitative analysis and there's the health and retirement study which is great but you know there could be another opportunity here for our area of interests how they overlap in collecting the data set and, and producing something like that you know, that idea is great very well in the workshop yeah, with what they're talking, talking about. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. So you'll expect to hear some of that from them, and I can see where these two groups connect on those issues. Yeah. Well, so that was the other thing we talked about yesterday, was some kind of a living laboratory. Mm -hmm. And so they're discussing this, this topic, too? Yes. Yeah, having, okay, so that's another action <coughs> item, I think, that is being right. able to, to form um, what could ultimately become a living laboratory of potential participants. Now that they took, well, um, they, they, they were collecting names of people who wanted to be part of the steering committee. And Marilyn volunteered. I, I volunteered. I yes, did. <laughs> <laughs> that was, okay. Sure. But, yeah, I, I thought you would want she to. She wants a nurse involved. I'm sure she yeah. And she doesn't want to do it herself. <laughs> no, no. Marilyn is overcommitted. I'm overcommitted. She's overcommitted. I think that's good that she doesn't want to do it. Well, let me just throw in another idea for consideration. I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but in uh, a couple of the programs I've been involved in, in, uh, in the architecture school, we've done something that's sort of a model of the medical grand rounds that once a month have a, uh, a speaker on a related topic. and. Now you could do that all video. You could do video conferencing. Yeah. So we would do it on Saturday mornings because that was the time that was the most promising and you didn't interfere with class schedules and other things. I don't do you think there would be any uh, interest or value in trying to initiate that or are there enough other sources? I think I think that's a good idea. Uh, personally, we've we've had uh, we've had very good 
locked lightly in the long-term care world. I'll tell you, this is this is from my long-term care world, and using video uh, via webinar, you know, mm -hmm. webinar kind of stuff. And we have had hundreds of people participate. I can Is it done for free or can you charge? No, we got it for free. Well, now, if, if we did something, the consortium could attend it for free, but open it up to sure. charge for others, then that Absolutely. could help underwrite some of the costs of sure. doing things. And, sure. and I find the AIA now, they get 300 bucks for a one-hour webinar. It's like, a, you got to be kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, if, right. if we could set something up on a monthly basis, it just, I mean, I don't know. It's, it, it's <laughs> nice to charge then, a fee oh, because then you know who's really going to go. Right, right. But then that might help generate some overhead to help cover the costs of sure. putting it on and, and the, this kind of an initiative. And the Saturday morning routine that has worked well at MU, they, they do a Saturday morning science. What do they call that? Thing? They call it Saturday morning science. That's what they call it. At the Bond, yes. at the Bond Life Science Center. And people from the community come in. How people come. I just I want to make sure that, this, that something doesn't fall through the cracks when you mentioned the built environment and John's comment about neighborhoods and this woman's comment too. And for example, community gardens, I don't know whether there's been research done on it, but there's, um, there's lots of um, anecdotal that when you have a community garden, in neighborhoods that that really helps reduce the social isolation but it has good health outcomes so just want to make sure that those kinds of um, I don't know what department would deal with that but those kinds of neighborhood um, resources that are shown to be very important in um, developing communities for all ages we have a graduate student there's been research the faculty hold, hold this um, uh, oh, actually. You know, um, yeah, and you just have a baby and you don't say much. The uh, he does um, a lot of food stuff. I'm trying to think, uh, and he's looked at some of that community. So when we're, we're, we're looking at making a list of clinical problems, technologies, test beds, so forth, so we should include in that community gardens yeah. or, or these there's, uh, there's other a term, kinds of partnerships. There's a term that we, we work with, you guys, at Case State and the um, Agriculture Department, it's horticultural therapy, is the group that we work with. Paul Stock is the sociologist oh, that I'm speaking of. Right. Horticultural therapy? Yeah, at Case State. I'd like that. I do horticultural therapy myself. <laughs> I just quilting. There's some down there. There is research that shows that getting your hands in the dirt actually does have cognitive yeah. positive effects. So all these things that we've intuitively known for maybe ten thousand years, now the science can show, which is very hopeful. Well, in terms of intergenerational, I think there's a lot more curriculum being developed around helping even um, preschool age children to try new foods and when they grow their own food and when they have mentors of older adults who are teaching them about the foods, they are more apt to try new things. And so in terms of long-term health and intergenerational passing of you know, taste and interest in marketing from one generation to another, and it's, it's a very exciting to too. Yeah, the that's book, true, I've seen that where it gets the parents to try it. Or getting more the parents than a few yeah, of, of those 20, 30, 40 somethings to learn about recipes. Yeah, my daycare has a, a garden, and it's there's people that come in in the, the uh, co op. Um, They're part of the Root for Food program. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Columbia has those kind of programs too. Yeah. This is just a thought. Um, it occurs to me that you know, I wonder if there's more areas of expertise that we're not. Considering, I know, at least yeah, from my perspective, there's there's quite a few people from UMKC specifically who are missing. For example, um, nursing, music therapy, law, um, school of medicine. Um, so the, the local consortium that we have on our, on our campus dealing with aging has basically all of the major units represented, and I think a lot of them could you know, would would have input into this as well. I guess I'm just wondering, maybe maybe we need to. Health policy and management, even here at, I don't think we have anyone from health policy and management at the Med Center. Well, I'm just wondering if we should go to our respective institutions and kind of. I, I think that's yeah. exactly what you should do because 
I'll let you know that I was turned down by a lot of people at your institution for whatever reason, and I think it's just that people are overloaded. Yeah, yeah. So if you go back to your institutions and begin to develop these cells, uh, uh, right. connectivity that would then work its way into to your leadership sure. because I said before, I think that's exactly what And if you want to yeah. commun communicate back to us in the cities, we can basically fill in the matrix mm -hmm. just adding those resources. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't I haven't mentioned communi the communications departments because um, we're, we're all faced with branding and how to message mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice to bring those folks on. I'm just curious, how, can I invite other researchers outside the I-74 I or Because I work with some researchers in Virginia and North Carolina, and then can I let them know some, or can I include them, the researcher pool into the I-74 filter? I'm just curious, how, what, what is the boundary of the question. pool? I think if, be, if that's part of your network, that's part of ours. No? I think we have to think about it a little bit. Um, I can see My, both ways. Yeah, I can see both ways. I'm kind of thinking I'm kind of thinking that it's that the strength of of the network would be the geography in which we all are working but not that we don't have relationships outside of that, because we all do. You know, I mean, I've got them all over the place. But, but for this effort, I would be focused within this geography, I think. That, that would be my initial take on it, too, that if this is the I-70 corridor consortium. They could come and move to my university, though. <laughs> That there might not be other projects down sure. um, the road that would, that would bring in other people for different reasons, mm -hmm. but for the purpose of the consortium, we could constrain it to the geographic location. It's a very good question. But I, I hadn't thought about that, but that, that's I think the way to I think about. the way to start is to look within this geography. Yeah, this, this also makes it more manageable if you have a boundary on it. Particularly in the early stages, and if we should be wildly successful, we'll probably have lots of people applying for an association with us, which is, that might be in the third or fourth stage. In, in fact, um, I was even wondering if we want, if we really want to extend it to Denver, um, only because then, you know, if you have, in the interest of making it more manageable, do we really want to include Denver as a first? because then there's all the universities in Denver I, and so forth. I, that might be a question. The only thing that we had envisioned it as being from the Rockies to the Mississippi, and that's the great watershed of the continent. So it, it made sense ge mm -hmm. geographically, but it may not make sense otherwise, and that's sort of up to the rest to think about. But I like the watershed idea anyway. Probably, and, does anybody know? someone that would be ideal to task. Well, I just, I, I work, I'm a research review committee for an Academy of Architecture and Health, and we just got a proposal in from Colorado State that was pretty uh, interesting. Yeah, and so I don't know if that would, Fort Collins would work or if that's, you want someone specific in Denver. Too far away from you. Far away. I don't know. But I mean, that's the discussion. I think it would take a while to really think through I think but, it's really good that we're bringing that up at this meeting, though. Yes. I mean, this is, and, and I don't think we're going to have an answer today, but it's really good that we brought that up today. Right. I, I'm going to talk a little bit later about Hartford Foundation, and um, mm -hmm. I can tell you Colorado has relationships with that foundation, sure. and so there's a way to leverage some of, of those interactions and some of what they're doing that's already caught the attention of that foundation. That might be helpful. It's only Yeah, I know folks at Colorado. No, I mean at Hartford. Oh, at Hartford. Oh, yeah. The Hartford yeah, we've Foundation. Got, yeah, we've got these there. We're not going to be for contacts with us. Oh, oh, the New York. New York. Yeah. 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 
So that was one of the grants I showed you that ran for it. Uh, oh, we had two cows who ran for it. Yeah, ran hard for it. Yeah, yeah. 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 when I was showing you the list, yeah, that was one of the things that we had. Yeah, so I showed uh, Dennis last night um, what I call the anatomy of an interdisciplinary research group, which was a timeline of how our group at MU got started. And it also lists all the but failures. It, it lists the failures. <laughs> and I, I think it's worth pointing out that, that you have to do that. That you have to be persistent. I mean, so this is not going to be an effort that's going to be successful in the short term. It's, it has the potential of being successful in the long term, but we have to be realistic that it's not something that's going to happen overnight. So when we started our group, you know, so it started when Marilyn came over to engineering in winter of 2002. So that was actually closer to 12 years ago. And, and it took us until the um, end of 2004 before we got our first research grant. So it took us... We kissed a lot of frogs. We, it took <laughs> us almost three years before we really got our first research grant started. And we were fortunate because it was actually the second proposal that we submitted that hit. And NSF gave us $1.2 million to get started. And I still can't believe that they did that because we had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> But that's what got us that's what, that's what, you know, that's what got, probably we'd never get it today because it's so, you know, the research landscape, funding landscape is so competitive. But, but the, the point is that it took us almost three years to get that first research grant funded. And the only reason it happened is because Marilyn and I were too damn stubborn to give up on the idea. I mean, you, you got to be persistent. Right, and so an AOA followed right after that. And then we got a million dollars from AOA, right? So that was nice. But I think realistically, people have to understand that this is going to be a long-term effort. Right? It's not going to happen overnight. <coughs> but I think that it is something that has a really good potential, and I'm excited about the possibility of linking up with folks. Well, across this. And I think yeah. if we've got some foundation to work from. You know, I mean, it's not like we're wondering, well, what sensors should we start with? Yeah. <laughs> but we really didn't know I what mean, the hell we, we were doing. We didn't even know which sensors to pick. <laughs> we, all I said was that nobody's going to ever wear anything because mom refused to wear hers and she's dead. So we're not going to do that. And I know too many people who had too many lifelines that they refused to wear, and they're all dead. Yeah. So, so we could, but we can think about what we can, um, what we can leverage from what we've already done, and try to build on that. They could go after low hanging fruit. Yeah. So, I think we've got uh, a good kind of concrete list of actionable items. So we, we want to establish some kind of leadership form, a steering committee. Maybe come up with a vision statement. Um, and identify the other thing that I like activities. is it sounds like our our drawing is a good vision. So our drawing. optimizing the optimizing the area under the curve, Marge. Yeah, that's the <laughs> way I explain it. As an engineer, <laughs> we're optimizing the area <laughs> under the curve. You know that curve that you showed last night? Yeah. I call it the, the lower one. The the yeah, that's one what I tell them. I just call it the lower one is the misery curve, and the other one is the that's what we want. curve. Okay? That's what we want. Yeah. So the other, there's, there's another um, way that people coined this as squaring the life curve. Yeah. Yep. That was another way of But they did that it. after I drew the picture. <laughs> <laughs> you were the Michelangelo. I told you, it's optimizing the area yeah, under the curve. curve. That's what it is. <laughs> So that, that could be a way of looking at this, yeah. yeah. And if it happens to extend the life, that even makes it makes awesome. it better. But, but we weren't willing to say that because we weren't going to do that research. On, you know, having it, was enough, it was enough of a stretch to just keep them up high, much less extend their life. Um, 
But yes, yeah, so we have some concrete ideas in place. Um, is there anything else that we're missing? I think I've actually got quite quite a list of things to do. Well, yeah, a good list. Mm -hmm. I know we talked yesterday of, and it came up in both groups, I think, about the little pilot projects that would then, you know, kind of feed into the steering committee. But then it's like, where do we get the money to fund these pilot projects? I know KU has a source of funding for us to collaborate with researchers within our athletic conference. And I don't, you know, I don't know if there could be some kind of... No, 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 they all, they all have that. So we can have, we can have the same thing. There was a big 12, there's a big 12, then you could get money to go out with big, big, yeah, I know. So now they have the SEC. Now Georgia kills us. But, so I understand they do have those things because they're trying to make those conferences to have an academic component to it and not just an athletic component to it. But even that, I, and, and I did this, I had uh, I had a really, I had one of these big 12 grants, but it was like a really small It's amount. a small amount, it kind Very of small gives you amount maybe of a visit in some arc or something like that. But I'm just wondering if there's something, you know, as we go forward for these bigger grants to think about, you know, where can there be other smaller pockets of money that we can use as we're building towards these larger grants? And um, um, well, we may but, have to, we may have to look to each campus. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, like I know somebody what. to kind of compile what resources are on each campus. I know our Paul Center does one about interdisciplinary research, but I don't think I think it's with, only within the institution. So that but could just, be some another action item yeah. is to explore funding mechanisms. Mm -hmm. um, we have a nice staff right back here to help us. <laughs> yeah. It, but um, should we approach companies? Or right, yeah. maybe we're not at, quite at that that's stage right. yet. I had that as an action item, but I think that's something once things get more developed. Or it just depends on your relationship. Upon, it depends upon who's sitting next to you in the airplane <laughs> or someplace. Because if we have the opportunity, you take it when it presents itself, regardless of how organized we are. Mm -hmm. You know. I think another thing we need to think about on yeah. that line, I mean, it's, it may be a barrier right now, but the solution to it is going to have to be some sort of long agreements. Yeah, we're because we've got to have the, we've got the intellectual yeah. property situation here, especially if we start working with, with private industry. Right. Yeah, they're going to talk about overheads and right. the overheads, and at the same time, and, and what comes out of the research, yeah. if, it, if it's products or techniques, or how can it be commercialized? Yeah, and right now, and especially if we get two or three universities involved, yeah. we're going to have two or three technology transfer entities trying to test the pet. So right. maybe that comes out of our law schools working together. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm or sure that, that most of the campuses, everybody's got a tech transfer office. Yeah. And so we, um, so, so the way we, we do the first step is, you know, we have these non-disclosure agreements, <laughs> which are pretty straightforward to put in place. Um, it just basically says that um, even the structure to say that whatever um, technology or, or idea, intellectual property belongs to each of the respective entities, right. that they get to keep that and that you can't steal somebody else's right. ideas. You sort of you know, have these disclosure, non disclosure agreements. Well, well, perhaps what you but, need at this stage is sort of a, a memorandum of understanding that right. says. Here's the general principles, since we don't have the details yet, but it says here's the general principles in which we're going to proceed, that you know, we're going to how we're going to handle some of these uh, questions. Mm -hmm. So if it's just a memorandum at this point until something real comes along and then sure. you start to build off mm -hmm. and, uh, and embellish it. Sure. That could be a, a good way to get the administration of each institution <laughs> <Yeah>. involved. <coughs> that would okay. be a door for that to get you know, that channel started open. Do you see that as being a problem at all? Or do you I see that as a problem that has to be worked through. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Right. Good, uh, right. That doesn't mean it's easy, but that's an See, all, and all of our leadership mm -hmm. is leaving. <laughs> <laughs> no, but can we do it before? It, no, no our effect team. <laughs> <laughs> our effect <laughs> stuff. It, this'll, this'll all take, this will this all take place for Most our chancellor, our and our uh, it won't affect it won't okay. those guys aren't the people. We, we just need to deal with tech transfer. That's um, that, the member of the That's for the potential conflict. Yes. Leave yeah. the leaders out of it. 
Eventually, there is going to be. I would don't assume an interinstitutional agreement is asked yeah, through a memorandum of understanding how we're going to proceed. But that can happen through tech transfer layer. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But and it, maybe it has to filter up. But I think if we start with tech transfer and work it out, then it's, it'll be a lot simpler than going up the provost and the chancellor. Yeah, you're right. That is a I, I would be shocked if it doesn't have to go up there. Oh, it probably will. <laughs> <going away. laughs> well, so it'll go. It'll, it'll end up to, going up. It'll go to the uh, the people at the system level, probably. Yeah. So it'll, at least we'll have a good a good yeah. setup between um, MU and UMKC and UMSL right. and. Yeah. Because to be honest but, with you, we have we've done some things with several schools, and each one you have to deal with individually, even in the MU system. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think if we start if, if we start there, we can exactly. It would make it make much easier conduit See, for private investment in this. If there were good if there were some <laughs> agreements in place, that's going to that's going to that's going to yeah. remove a lot of the obstructions to. Okay, fine. I want to read this. I want to read this. I want to read this. 